Hey everybody, I hope you had a great week. We made it to yet another Wednesday. How's everybody doing? So glad you can make it. So it looks like we have Mr. Roy. How are you doing, sir? Always a pleasure to see you. So glad you're here. So that is great. Mr. John Diekman, how are you, sir? Good to see you. How's everything today? And we are going to, I'm going to pull up the reference of Jean here, if I could find her. There she is. Okay, Patty, how are you, Patty, all the way from Illinois? So we got Roy from Jersey, John from Wisconsin. We have Patty from Illinois. Very cool, very happy, excited to see you all today. Thank you so much for hanging out. Let me just kill the the volume here so there's no uh, feedback that's good and so we have a nice small group here today that's nice it's always good when we have the small groups as well as the big groups I say so let's see I just want to make sure um, let me make sure I have this in focus so I'm just gonna pull her up here let's see move over here and with the magic of the DSLR, I could go ahead and focus it when it is blown up. So this way I know when I pull out like that, it's nice and in focus. And now what I can do is I can go ahead and increase the contrast. Let me do that. Let's see. Move this over here and I'll just increase that contrast. Let's see. Where is that? Contrast is right here. And there we go. I like that just a tad bit better. Perfect. Okay, so here we go. No start. Now, I do have the light mixture in my airbrush right now. It's a little bit darker. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start today so, sort of uh, darkening the values up a little bit. And it's going to be pretty good because you're going to see things start to pop once I come in with this light mixture. Remember, we start with the diluted detail mixture. And so this really makes a difference. This used to be my lightest mixture in the past. Hey, Blue, how are you? Great to see you. How's your finger feeling? Do I have all my lights on? It just seems dark here today. Maybe my glasses are dirty. Let me see. I'm just gonna come here and clean my glasses. So, so how's your how's your finger blue? I know you uh, were in pain last week, so I really pray you're feeling better. Colette, how are you? It's great to see you all the way from Wisconsin. We have, and we have blue from Long Island. Blue says she's sporting some bling. Okay, cool. What bling is that? Let me come over here. There we go. That's a little better. Let's see. Oh, pin sticking out. Pobrecita. I'm so sorry. Oh, man. That really stinks. I can't wait till they get them out of you. So we're just going to continue darkening the hair here. Just, just feels darker in here all of a sudden. I don't know why. Okay. As you can see, I'm just darkening the large shapes. Small shapes come later. Hey, what's up, Patrick? Great to see you. How are you, sir? All right. All the way from Massachusetts. Mr. Patrick, thanks, Clutch, for coming by. I appreciate it. Always a pleasure to see you, sir. So with this light mixture, even though it used to be the lightest in the ink mixtures, now you can see how it contrasts with that detail mixture, which makes a big difference. Hey, Willie, how are you? How you been, sir? Always a pleasure. 
How's life out there in Massachusetts? So we have two Massachusetts people in the house today. Aw, oh, thanks, Blue. Blue says it's a beautiful piece. I, I appreciate that. And John says, teacher's late. Uh-oh, which teacher? Yeah, like inside the studio looks dark. Oh, not bad, Willie, you know, uh, working hard, staying positive, and, and knowing that good times are coming. Well, even if good times aren't coming, it's, it's okay to, to be positive, right? It's always better to be positive. Uh, <laughs> Clutch says, mass holes <laughs> unite. <laughs> Cody, how you doing? Great to see you. How's everything, Cody? So, Cody, forgive me. I always like to know where, uh, you know, those who are in the chat. Where are you from, Cody? I know I probably heard last week, so forgive my, my lack of memory. And we're just going to continue darkening this hair. And you'll see when we darken the hair, we're going to have to darken everything else. So that's always interesting. And notice I'm spraying away from the face. If I was spraying towards the face, I would get overspray on her skin. So that's why you direction of... Oh, great. South Florida. Fantastic. Okay. I lived in Florida for eight years. I lived in Kissimmee, just outside of Orlando. And let's take a look at the hair. Make sure I got it correct. It's a little bit darker over here, but not as dark as where we were springing. go sometimes when you're working with your airbrush you might feel it stick just a little bit just loosen your chucking nut and just twirl the needle and then go ahead and tighten it make sure that there is no uh, tip dry and then you feel uh, that's uh, much smoother so that's something to really think about you know to really do if you start feeling a little stickiness, I'm going to put a little freehand shield action right here on this edge. Remember, you spray away. You cover with the freehand shield uh, what you don't want to spray, and then you spray on the other side. So always cover what you don't want to spray. Sounds like a very simple thing, but it really isn't. As you can see, doing something like the hair seems boring and whatever, but it's really an important part of getting the whole likeness. Thanks, Willie. Willie says she looks beautiful. I appreciate that, sir, very much. You know, I always have a pl it's always a pleasure to paint uh, Miss Tierney. And let's move here and get this edge here, this nice dark edge. And if ever you get any moisture, you feel on the freehand shield, just wipe that off. Always keep that whole saying, which is, as I always say, perpendicular and not parallel. There are exceptions to every rule. Trust me, there really is. But, you know, there are exceptions, remember. And I'm basically just sculpting the light, right? Which in turn is sculpting the hair, right? So those two things. 
Thanks, Blue. Blue says, don't forget to hit the like button. I appreciate that. And we're just going to continue moving down, sculpting the light as it is hitting the mass of the hair. Remember what we say, paint the helmet first, then paint, then paint the hair. So right now, this is the helmet. And when you want detail, you go close. And when you want it to be lighter, you just go far away. No need to press harder or less or anything like that. Just, you know, distance is the secret. Control is not this magical thing. It's, it's learning what the airbrush does and making it do what you want to do. And that's control. So it really isn't, you know, a talent or anything. It's just you know, both muscle memory and really knowing what this thing is going to do under different circumstances, different distances. Remember, I set the air pressure at 25 PSI, you know. Ah, oh, sorry to hear that. Uh, so, looks like uh, Mr. John Deakman's video froze. Anyone else's video froze or is it just John? How's the video for everybody out there? Oh, good. Very good. So John is good. And let's work on this here. There's never a rush, right? You always take your time. You always do the one second rule. Never paint what is not there. And this is a, a light gray here. And then it gets more intense right over here. And remember, we're painting shapes. And those shapes are being affected on how the light is actually falling on the hair. When you think of it that way, you're really, you're not getting overwhelmed, right? And that's not what we want. We don't want to get overwhelmed. And it's easy to get overwhelmed, trust me. And there's some very distinct shapes in there, but we're not getting involved with that at this point. Okay. Oh, great. Thanks, Clutch. I appreciate that. And, and Roy and Blue. And hey, Mike. So... So we have really good, uh, good connection. So I'm glad that it worked out for you, John. I, I really hate when that happens. working on some of the abstract shapes of the hair here not going crazy just just getting some of those abstract shapes things that we definitely can work out later and we're going to use a freehand shield right here and I'm going to go perpendicular and not parallel now, a lot of times when you have your freehand shield and you have it down like this and you spray, you'll see a lot of times this will flap up and how you combat that is just lift it slightly and that will keep that from happening. And I cast perpendicular and not parallel and we're going to get that beautiful hard edge there while getting darker. So you see that beautiful hard edge. No other medium in the world can do that except for airbrush 
nothing. They can come close, but they can't do it with air, what airbrush can do and with the ease that we do it with, you know? We do it with complete ease. There we go. So now that we're darkening hair there, let's move on over to the right side of her. And so we're going to make sure we wipe this off, right? We don't want to reposition any wet ink. So we have to make sure that we are careful. Perpendicular and not parallel. And we're going to be very careful not to get over spray that way okay and so you keep with this shield which I love which is a pinup shield you can definitely find any angle you just got to keep twirling and twisting until you find it and you see how I can get that beautiful angle now I'm gonna get right on that corner there so when you're doing different areas like that in the airbrush world that's calling uh, you know crawling along this you know crawling along when you're you're spraying with the shield there we go so you see I have that really beautiful dark edge and then we're gonna work on her beautiful neck here wipe that off you don't want to reposition wet ink so so make sure you keep telling yourself that you do not want to reposition wet ink if you go in perpendicular and not parallel, you're going to have complete control as to where you're spraying, especially when you're doing something like this. See, if I didn't have complete control, I could have brought that edge all the way into her face, and that would have been a lot of fun trying to fix it. Trust me. Hey, how you doing, Brad? Good to see you. Nice, nice to join us, sir. Hope everything's going good in Manitoba. And so Brad is from uh, Central Canada, beautiful country out there. So that's nice. Okay, so you see we darkened the hair, right? So what does that mean? That we got to darken other areas. So let's zoom in on the eyes and kind of bring them up to speed, right? So let's work on this eye. So we're working on the eye camera left, right? And... Let's make this happen. So I'm about three quarters of an inch here. My air pressure is way down. Why? Because I don't want a spider. I like spiders, but not when I'm painting. See the detail you can get with the Extreme Patriot Arrow, $149. And like I always say, I go head to head with anybody with, with a uh, Eclipse to check out which is, which is the best. That's how much I believe in this airbrush. And let's see. And then we'll move over here to eye on camera right, right? Camera right, correct. So we'll start with, well, we'll start not putting my hat in front. Okay, come over here. see how I'm just darkening that up now it was darker before but once we darkened the hair with the light mixture you see how we had to go ahead and darken this up as well 
Then I'm going to work on this area right here by the eye socket. And so let's zoom out and see how good or bad it looks. Okay, you see when we darkened it really gives a lot more structure, you know, which is really good. Okay, so now let's go ahead and work on her nostrils here. Let's zoom in so you can see. Okay, I'm going to start with this nostril right here. And let's go with this nostril right here. Now that's precision, and that's what that airbrush does for you. $149, and it does everything that one of those $500 Takumis will do. Plus, you know what the beautiful thing about these airbrushes is that as you break them in, they just get more and more better, more comfortable. They, they break in even better. I mean, all around, it's just, uh, it just starts fitting like a glove, you know? I mean, I can't imagine for my main airbrush using anything else than the one I've been using since 2018. I just can't imagine it, honestly. So now you see how beautiful uh, that's coming out. And you see that, you know, with the detail, with our ability to get in there with the detail, how that really helps us. So, you know, darkening. So here, here's the, the kicker. Darkening the hair, then darkening the eyes, nose, and mouth. Moving down the center line of the body, you start to see that now the mid-tones have to darken. And that's how we darken it, you know? Oh, yes. So Patrick needs another badger hose, definitely. Um... I've seen them on Amazon, and I also know you can get them from, oh, if you do get it at usaairbrushsupply.com, I want you to use this code. It's 15% off, Patrick. Timothy PSA. So if you use that when you go on usaairsupply.com, uh, is it airbrush supply? Let me double check. Oh, my God, I forgot. Let me see. So USA Airbrush Supply. Com. I'm gonna show you guys. I'm gonna put it in the in the uh, comments here. Yeah. So here is the website. And if you type in at the end, 15, uh, you get 15% off by putting uh, Timothy PSA, which is really not a bad value, right? So let's see. So if you do supply, you do decide to get it there, don't forget Timothy PSA. Uh, they do have it at Amazon, so you know weigh the prices, you know, you know with shipping and everything. So whatever is the best value, the best price, right? But I would definitely get it, you know, like a an actual Badger air hose, not a off brand or anything. So I am going right now from a a light mixture to a detail mixture so when that happens right what you have to do when you're going from a darker color to a lighter color you're going to have to actually clean it a little bit better okay so what I like to do is to take this airbrush make it bigger here so I take the airbrush spray it out make sure I get rid of all the light mixture in there and then I come over here regular water mind you no reducer no 20 40 30 40 87 height none of that stuff just regular old water you spray that out you take a pretty good uh, paper towel I like using Viva and you just go right into the cup like this see so you get all that gunk out right 
We're going to spray some more water through it, give it a really thorough cleaning. And go ahead and uh, wipe this again. Give it a good wiping. And now you can go ahead and put that detail mixture in, which is good. Ah, definitely, Patrick. I'll definitely remind you of that. Hey, how are you, Lupe? It's great to see you. How's everything? Oh, wow. And are you still doing those amazing uh, uh, dessert videos? They are so wonderful. Oh, man, it's so great to see you. Now, it's been a long time. Did I get your name correctly? Please tell me I did. My, my memory sometimes is all over the place. I'm going to shake that up. I know uh, you do these amazing... I always love your videos on your desserts and everything. They're just amazing. I did. That's a good memory. So, not as bad as I thought, right? I'm doing okay. Okay, so now I have... So, I'm so glad that you're still doing the videos. I have to come check it out. Guys, if you can, check out the Cookie Couture channel. If you want some ideas for... Uh, you have a party or a kid's party or, you know, a theme party and... She just makes these amazing pastries and cupcakes and with themes, especially with graduation and everything. Definitely check her out. Really wonderful stuff and a really nice person. So that's a double reason. Okay, so I have this uh, detail mixture back in here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, work on her dress a little bit. I don't think I have to zoom in on the dress, though. Ah, oh, so glad to see you as well, Lupe. You are the best. And so we still have, so we have the detail mixture, and we're not going to go too dark. We're just going to just re, uh, how do I say, sort of reestablish or reinforce these wonderful shapes that we're using Yes, and uh, Clutch is also a chef, so uh, that's cool. So we have quite the talented culinary arts uh, members here today. And, uh, and uh, Clutch is really amazing uh, with his culinary arts, which is really wonderful to see. Um, You know, we think we can cook until we go and meet somebody like Clutch and, and the Cookie Couture uh, Lupe, and we go, wow, now they're artists, right, when it comes to uh, culinary. Okay, so we have a little bit of a value here. So rather than pull out that shield, I'm just going to come here and cover it up. I'm about four inches away, and you see how I'm just darkening that up just a little bit, just continuing this cast shadow that's coming down and hitting her right there. Um, let me see if I can lighten her up. No, that's too much lightening. And oh, that's right. So, so Clutch is smoking some chicken right now, which is amazing. <coughs> that's really great stuff. Oh man getting hungry okay so we have the detail mixture and you see right now we have and I'll show you a little trick and it's always not trick just technique right I'm not big on tricks so I on camera left you can see we have the lower eyelid and the bag underneath her eye beautiful woman but we're all human right so rather than just Hope I get it right with the airbrush, right? Not to be a cowboy. I don't want to be a cowboy. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this down very lightly with the pencil. See that? 
as we all are, we're all better with the pencil because that's what we started playing with when we were three years old. And just like that. And now I'm just going to take my airbrush and I'm going to just have a little torn paper action here. And I'm just going to find that. And I'm going to be quite far away. I'm going to be about three and a half to four inches. Now I do have that penciled in. And you see how I just put that in like that. You see that? And that, my friends, is really going to... Uh, and now we can erase that pencil line once it's dry. And you see, you can test it on the paper and move it over like that. And you see how we actually did the bag of the eye. So that is really important. And the fact that we use something like this, which is really crucial to get an organic shape, sometimes using this is not the best thing. We don't want her to look like a robot. Mr. Leahy, how you doing? Good to see you, sir. Hey, Mike S., good to see you as well. That's so great both of you are here. So I'm very happy about that. That's cool. And now since we did the bag under her first eye, and now we'll do it under her second eye. Like I said, she's most one of the most beautiful women ever, but she's human, so... And what makes her people beautiful is their humanity. Am I right? This one I'm not going to worry so much about the um, the right shape. Because I know I have it. And there you go. So you see how she's looking more human now. And that's important, you know. So that's cool. So, so great. So this is really fantastic. As you can see as I did that now I do have that proclivity to want to go ahead and say let's go ahead and erase that but remember you know you we have to always err on the side of caution so you want to make sure it's dry before you erase so I may turn these uh, live streams to either 90 minutes or an hour because I feel maybe two hours is too long so I might be lessening the the length of the live streams and this way I can do a regular video a week so using that extra time to maybe do a how-to video on YouTube something like that so uh, stay tuned it may Stay. It might not continue 9.30 to 11. It might be 9.30 to 10.30 or 9.30 to 11. But I'm not sure just yet. So that's cool. And let's see. So we're going to continue modeling the forms in her face. So let's, let's continue um, over here just a little bit. And you can see we're very close to coming in with the white pastel. Not quite there yet, but we're getting close. And I'm just going to model the forms. Darkening where it needs. just moving about so here in the lips you can see the lips are a three-dimensional space a three-dimensional form in space so but so if the light is coming from above and it looks like it's coming from above and slightly to the left so that means the right side of the corner of her bottom lip is going to have what shadow and but I really hate the word shadow. It's going to be less intense of a light. It's going to be a less intense uh, light that's hitting it. And 
and you can see now it's time to shape those lips they're not wax lips there's a lot going on it's being affected by light what's it being affected by the light it being affected by anything else no the light is what's affecting it it's going to give her her character when we paint her And we're going to come in with the eraser and make it even more, uh, more detailed. But remember, we're light detectives. We're not painting the likeness. The likeness happens when we paint the light. And let's see what I missed. Uh, Uh, oh, thanks, Blue. I appreciate that. Thank you. And let's continue over here. So thank you, Blue. And just come here. And just working on this lip area. Yeah, I missed my Tim's 2 Minute Tech Tuesday. Actually, my video on PSI is going crazy. It's getting like 17,000 views. So it's amazing how, you know, you put a regular video out there and it does nothing for a long time and then all of a sudden explodes. Okay, so now is a good time to go ahead and remember that pencil line we did way back when? Let's take care of it now with a medium aggressive eraser. There we go. And you see now we have nothing but that beautiful uh, bag under her eye. And of course there's some light areas in there and we'll go ahead and attack them. But all in good time, right? We'll just take it, take time, you know? That's what's important. Hey, Todd, how you doing? It's good to see you. Well, I'm glad that the, uh, the uh, internet is working right now. That's a, that's a relief. So it's good to see you. How you feeling? Last time we talked, I believe you were not feeling well. Are you feeling better, my friend? And of course, you know, you see here it is a lot going on in this so-called shadow, which I'm trying to find out a better word than shadow because shadow is a word that really does not describe what we're painting. And it's not light and shadow. It really isn't. John, how you doing? Great to see you, sir. So glad you're here. So now I'm going to shape this light again over here above her lip. So you can see that the light is changing because her the cylinder around her teeth, which is her lips and everything, that's turning towards and away from the light. And there are little nuances, and that's our job is to really understand those nuances and record them. So that's our job. So that's what we have to worry about. When you're erasing, you always want to start with the least aggressive eraser and go more aggressive on a need to case, need to case basis, right? You don't want to start too aggressive and tear the paper needlessly because there's only so much paper to go around. So, with that being said, let's go ahead. Oh, with that being said, let's let's go ahead. I'm getting poetic today. All right, so we'll just very lightly bring this down and you can see how by really paying attention to the light and anatomy we can really start to see what's happening and we can start portraying it so one of the things I was telling my students today is that you need to know the characteristics of what you're painting to truly understand it right if you're looking so this is something I, I do with my students 
Um, let's say, look around your room. Before you look around where you are, I want you to tell me how many, how many blue things are in the room, right? So pick a number of how many blue things are in the room, right off the bat. And then, after you go ahead and just pick out of your head how many blue things are in the room, now go ahead and look around and count how many blue things are in the room. And you'll see anything that has the color blue is everywhere. And you know why I'm seeing it everywhere? Because now I'm looking for it. That's the same thing with when you are uh, painting figures. You're looking for anatomy, anatomical landmarks. You're looking for it. When you're looking for it, you're going to... When you're looking for it, you're going to see it. You ever buy a car or someone bought a certain car and all of a sudden you're seeing that car everywhere because you're looking for it. Shadow, reduce light. Very cool. That's a great name there, Brad. I might take you up on that. That's for sure. So, same thing when you look around the room and then you see all those blue items which you didn't realize how many blue items were there and you see how that works. So, those of you who think it's not important to know anatomy or at least get a somewhat uh, working knowledge of anatomy or the main anatomical parts, you, we're mistaken because if you're looking for an anatomical landmark, you're going to find it. If you're not looking for it, you still might find it. You might trip over it, but you're not looking for it and your chances of finding it are greatly reduced. So by knowing the anatomy, you can see how I'm able to decipher what's happening here and, and actually make her look a lot more three-dimensional. So you can see just the little things I'm doing here is really coming together, right? Because I'm looking for it. Not only that, I'm also looking for the light, right? I'm looking for how how the light is going to hit these areas and by having a little bit of a working knowledge I can understand and look for where those shifts would take place and it's like anything else if you're working on if you're a mechanic and you're working on Chevrolets you're gonna know things about a Chevrolet right otherwise you're not gonna be a very successful mechanic and over time you're gonna learn more and more same thing, if you're going to be a portrait painter, you want to learn as much about the human face as possible. And if you're, be, and if you're painting realistically, you're going to want to know a lot about light as possible because that's what we're painting. So let's say you have a beautiful model and she's in the living room and you turn out the light. You turn out the light, she's gone. You know, you can't see her, you can't paint her. So the light is the most important thing. You might be able to hear her, but you can't paint her. You can record her, <laughs> but you can't paint her. And that's the difference. As you can see how I'm able to go ahead and, and kind of shape this light here. And, you know, we have the light mixture. We're going to do darker values. But you see, she's starting to really have have volume and that's what you want let's see oh cool cool Mike right you have to know the difference between you know, a Chevrolet and a Toyota, right? To know what's going on with them, I'm sure. I don't know anything about cars, but I know the more you no have a working knowledge of something, the better you can understand it and, uh, you know, work with it. So we're still working. So I'm going to get an aggressive eraser here, and I'm going to start shape shaping that hair, right? So you notice how I'm moving around, not staying in one area, that sort of thing. Hey, Mayumi, how are you? It's great to see you. How are you today? And thank you so much. I appreciate that, Mayumi. Mayumi, is this your first time here? 
And and uh, where are you from, may I ask? Thank you so much for stopping by. It's great to see you. And you can see as I come in with this aggressive eraser, I could start, you know, really shaping the hair. Hey, Squeeze, how you doing? Good to see you, sir. How's everything? Your airbrush will be going out in the next day or so. I just wanted to test everything to make sure it was perfect before I let it go. That's the way I am. I'm really like, I got to put it through its paces. Everything has to be perfect before. So I usually, I usually work with it for about an hour, three hours, sometimes more and really test it out and make sure that it works better than my own and until then uh it doesn't leave my studio but i'm almost done with yours sir and thank you for your patience of course ah thank you thank you so much squeeze i appreciate that so much I love working with everybody that's here, you know, that, you know, everyone in this community is so helpful and so great. And uh, my guest says, yes, I too. Toyota makes low power engines that run forever, but body rusts off. Chevy, Ford and Dodge makes horsepower, but the last a short time. Oh, I see. That's a good insight. Definitely. Thank you. And you see, we have these little lights over here, and we want to make sure that we record what the light is doing, right? How it's hitting the hair. So we're just going to really pay attention to that and just slowly shape the hair because we're shaping the light. And don't worry about the individual hairs. Remember, we're painting the helmet first, right? Then we get into the individual hairs. So we have plenty of time for that. But what we do have to do, we do need to do, is to get the direction of the hair, right? That's crucial. Always get the direction of the hair. See that, how I'm getting the direction of the hair, how important that is? And now we're sort of, and what we want to do is we want to feel that light bouncing off of Gene Tierney's hair. And remember... When we're looking at a photograph, we're looking at a split second, and I do mean split second, like maybe one two hundred of a second. The moment when that flash, when that camera curtain opened and closed, and it usually is about a one two hundred of a second, and uh, the lights went on and shaped all of this. These are all this is most likely done, most definitely done in the studio using strobes. But back then, I think they used gunpowder or something like that, didn't they? Did they have regular flashes at this point? I don't know, like in the late 40s. That's a good question. I am a student of photography. I'm getting better and better. I'm working hard. The more I study photography, the better I get as a painter. And it's night and day, my understanding now. So if you want to take your art to the next level, get into photography. More importantly, get into studio photography. I can't stress that enough. It will make you a better painter. Oh, Brad says his new airbrush should be there this week. Uh, thanks. So Brad uh, ordered the airbrush. He's in Canada. So I shipped that out about a week ago. So hopefully that will be there. I think it arrived in Canada. When did it arrive in Canada? It arrived in Canada last week on the 22nd. So it should be there pretty soon. I had one going to Italy. And I was worried because uh, it left here like on April 1st and didn't get there to like May 15th. So sometimes international takes a long time. So... Uh, that's the that's the thing we have to be patient with but i love shipping my paint my airbrushes internationally it's so great that my airbrushes and my inks are all over the world literally all over the world bosnia 
Turkey, uh, Greece, I mean, literally all over the world. So it's so fantastic. Spain, England, Ireland. So it's really amazing. Ah, that's so great there, Brad. So thank you for that testimony. I appreciate that. Ah, very cool. One for each of the ink mixtures, which is a great idea. And you see how I can come over here and lessen my my pressure and get a lighter uh, a lighter erasing. See, now I'm plowing the field to come in with the white pastel, right? And that's what we're doing. So you can see how things are kind of being set up. I played college volleyball, men's volleyball in college, and one of the things that I loved was setting things up, setting up for the spike, you know? So it was like, I was a setter, another person was a setter, so it would come over, one guy would hit it, I would set it over to the left, and then, and then the guy on the right would go ahead and spike it. So that was the fun part, I loved that, you know? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Patrick. Patrick says it's an amazing legacy to lay claim to. I appreciate that, sir. Thank you. And yeah, I love that airbrush. And I love the fact that, you know, I came into airbrushing in 2010. And that's when I first touched an airbrush. And it was just really just for doing underpaintings for my pastel paintings, which were doing really well i was winning national international awards with it and i really loved how it was uh working out and i think i have a picture i'm going to see if i can show you one of the first uh airbrush paintings i ever did and let's see if i could pull that up if i come here and then i look for image just bear with me guys i'm going to look for an image and it's just going to be a moment. So let's see. Where is she? Would she be probably in my this drive right here? Let's see. Yes. So I think It'll just be one quick moment, guys. Thanks for your patience. I appreciate it. You guys are all great. Okay. So I have to look for old computer or old website. I'm not very good with my ABCs. I'm not kidding. I'm really quite terrible. So this is one of my first underpaintings using India ink. So as you can see, this is one of my first forays, first time touching the uh, airbrush. And uh, really fell in love with it, you know. I, uh, you can see this is the underpainting for my Rachel painting, which is uh, those who are on Facebook know that's my uh, profile picture. So this was one of my uh, most successful pastel paintings. So this is on uh, Masonite, and and so basically Masonite treated with uh, marble dust and gesso, and then over that I went ahead and did my uh, ink mixtures on it, and uh, from that I went ahead and painted pastel over it, so that's pretty cool. And then I went over here, and let me see if I could uh, turn this off. And if I can show you the finished painting, so it'll just be one moment. And you can see how I use the uh, India ink underpainting to go ahead and do pastel over it. So I was content just doing, you know, straight um, painting, you know, just doing the, uh, uh, you know, underpaintings. But I kind of fell in love with the airbrush about 10 years ago. 
and then the rest is history right it just uh, just blossomed from there Let's see if I can find Rachel where is she Rachel where are you I really loved Rachel because I was going through a tough time and I loved the story of Rachel from the Bible so it really had a you know a lot of significance to me she had a lot of significance to me in many ways so that's the reason why I picked Rachel. I just want to see if I could find her picture to finish painting. You never know. I, I may be, oh, there she is. I found her. So there is the finished painting. So you see here, this was the underpainting, right? Which is right here. And so that was the first time I touched India ink and airbrush. And then I just painted over it like that. And so you can see uh, how they, they really relate to one another. Because I was doing uh, pen and ink brush painting uh, for the underpainting before that. And then I seen a couple of really good YouTube videos. One by Daniel Powers. And it just blew me away. And so this was my first foray into airbrushing, which, which just, you know, it, it really is. I mean, it really has been a wonderful 11 year run now of just working with airbrushes. And, you know, I'm, it's, I didn't come in fresh. I was painting over 25 years before I touched an airbrush. So I kind of picked it up faster than most would. Uh, yes, there is a group in, uh, I want you to join Patrick. So to, I'm going to go ahead and send you the link to that. Let me do that. Uh, ink flingers. Make sure I get that group here. Uh, there we go. And I'm going to send you a link and just join. And uh, somebody will uh, go ahead and approve you, of course. So let me, in, uh, let me send you the link, my friend. There you go, sir. So that's sent. And so let's see, we have any questions here? So Blue says that, I don't know if she's talking about me or somebody else, um, but Blue says, love it and thanks to you and some others, the encouragement to keep going. Uh, is what made it happen. Nope, she's talking about her painting, so that's cool. And so let's see what else. Uh, and let's see, so that's cool. So, so Mike says, Tim, just once or twice a year, not every week. So what are we discussing, Sir Mike? Oh, here's Mike's question. Uh, why don't you do an art show on here done by your followers of your videos? Can that be worked into your schedule? I would love to. My schedule is really crazy. I should be rich because I work so many hours, but it's a labor of love. And that's a good idea, but that's why uh, Inklingers on Facebook that's a good thing. Uh, I wish I could do more. Uh, right now, it just seems like I'm the guy who's making the donuts, you know. Uh, I, reach, I, I hit myself at the door. But I always want to keep these uh, live streams going, right? It's so important to me to keep the live streams going. So right here, which is interesting, we have this lighter color of her hair. You see that? And maybe something in the future, Mike, definitely, when things get a little easier. That's a good thing. I would love to show off everybody's work, definitely. It's a great idea. And so you see how I can just start assimilating her hair into the background, which is really cool.
So it's like we're getting rid of that pasted feeling, right? We're going to really make her feel like she's has atmosphere around her. There's air around her. And we're just doing a little bit at a time, but looking at the whole picture while we're working, right? It's so important. Continue this. And remember, we're just, we're just working on different areas. We're just generalizing now. We'll get much more detailed as we go. We don't, the hair is not a major player. We don't want the hair to get ahead of everything. That would be bad. So before we go ahead and put in the white, we want to make sure that we sculpt the light, right? So that rhymes. So before we put in the white, we want to sculpt the light because the light, the white is just the most light facing of areas, but there's all these degrees of, of light as it moves around, right? Some parts are facing it, you know, 80%, 70%, 60%, and are receiving more lights than areas that are receiving light, uh, you know, that are facing it at let's say 30% or 20%, right? So before we go in with the light, we have to see these 20, 30, 40, 50% areas, and then we can understand what we're looking at and and have a degree of it, right? We don't want to you don't want to go ahead and and uh, start out super light and then you have nowhere to go. It's like you painted yourself into a corner. So you want to build up these values. You have plenty of time. We don't want to be a cowboy. I work slow because it's the right way to do it. And and, and I, it is. It's the right way. I don't understand. You know, working fast is just working fast. Uh, it's just, it's important to take your time. It's important to, to go ahead and uh, ease into those values and really assess everything. I mean, so it's important for me to take my time. It might seem I'm working really quick, but I'm really not. Uh, I'm a very uh, deliberate painter in everything I do, whether it's pastel or pencil, I'm very deliberate. So I make sure that I will sometimes spray an area or work on an area over and over before I get it just right. There's a couple of good ones, you know, there's, um, uh, well, there's, uh, I can't think of them any off the bat. I'm going to send you some links, definitely, Patrick, and uh, help you out there. But there are some really good ones out there. And we're working, so I'm going to be a good distance away. So right here, uh, off the nostril of the no nose, I'm about five inches away. And I'm just going to barely touch that. See that? I'm just barely touching that. But I want to definitely get that feeling of the anatomy that's under her skin. The anatomy that's under the muscle. All those different things. Okay, so that ear over on the right, over on the left side, camera left. Let's go ahead and see if we could work on that just a little bit. Only paint what you see.
There we go. So you see how we're resolving that. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and add some pastel. Dun, 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 right? This is a fun part. So we're just going to add some. We're going to go back and forth and erase and go back in. But right now, I think we're at the point where we can start clarifying some areas, right? So let me uh, plow the field here. Right here on her forehead. Just plow that field. You want to set up for the white, right? You don't want to just, you know, go in there. You want to really set up for it. And where do we always start with the white? You guessed it, at the eyes. So I like using the stump and the white pastel stick. So I use a medium grain, uh, grade uh, sandpaper. I use a pit pastel, pastel pencil and a stump. Make sure you have a stump that's dedicated just to the white because you don't want to mix graphite and white. It's not good. So now you can see I'm going to start with the least of the white. Now white is not just white. There's uh, gradations of white and that's why I use pastel because you can get the full gamut so to speak. So now you can see, and also there's a little bit of light showing up in there. See how I can make that, that white in there of the eye and that shadow have real dimension with just a few strokes here and there. Now the catch lights. See that? One catch light. And then we'll put in the other catch light below. Now you might ask me, why are there two catch lights, Tim? And what are catch lights? What are you talking about? That's why working with, uh, with photography is so important. Again, if you're going to be most of the time, if you're a photograph, if you're working from photographs, shouldn't you know a lot about photographs? Yes, because if you're working from photographs, you want to know what to look for. So that's why you want to get into photography. So what's happening is there's two lights and the eyes always give away what the photographer did. And what was this like 50, 60 years ago, maybe 80 years ago? So what he did was he had a, a large light right here and that was lighting her whole face and her hair. And then you see on the side of her face, uh, on the right side of her face is, and the hair is another light so there's actually two lights that are hitting her. So, and there might even be a reflector, which is a third light, which is putting light in the shadows underneath her, her chin and also on her neck. So those are things that you really need to be aware of. Awareness, right? That's the, that's the word of the day, is awareness of what you're doing. You're painting the light, check. You're painting anatomy, check. You're painting, you're painting a photograph, check. So you have to know those things. Can you paint without knowing those things? Of course you can. Are you going to be as effective? Of course you're not. So that's why it's so important. I tell everybody like it is because if it's working for me, I know it'll work for you. And you can go as deep as you want, and it could be just something you do for fun, and that's cool. Both are cool. But the more that you understand what you're painting, the more you're going to have something to say about it. Or her. Or him. Or it. Right? So you can see how just these little developments that we're doing with the white pastel. Remember less less pressure means less pastel right less pressure means less pastel what we do on one eye we do on the other eye we go to the eye on camera right correct and let's see did i miss any questions oh there was a lot of talking going on i missed all of it i'm so sorry 
Uh, let's see. Oh, Blue says she thinks so far this is her favorite piece. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. And John says she's looking great. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate that. Oh, I, 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 as far as, you know, I never judge, Mike. I'll paint anyone, no matter how much they drink. It's the quality of their heart I care about, not how much they drink. Very cool, very cool. I'm not saying that you can't do an amazing piece of a photo you didn't take. I'm just saying that you have a much better chance of saying something greater if we take the photo ourselves. Now, we can't afford to have the model pose for us like the old masters did. I know I can't. So, taking the photos are the next best thing. That's why it's so crucial to get better and better and to, you know, work on your craft. Let's see here. We're going to zoom out. And you're going to see just the difference it makes on those eyes. See that? Just that difference. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some scumbling technique here. And I'm just going to rub in some of that white pastel in this area in her forehead. It's a larger area of light. And I'm just going to really sculpt the forehead. I'm not going to put it indiscriminately. I'm also looking at where... And anatomically, it's going to be facing the light because some areas come forward, some areas go back. Like the orbital ridge comes forward, am I right? So if it's coming forward, what's it going to get? More light. The eye sockets go in. So when it's going in, what's it going to get? Less light. And you see with pastel, we can build up that light. Take your time, let it, let it happen, right? Let it happen. Don't force it. And you can see at this stage, a lot of the mid-tones, you can go over it without any blue shift. And that's the beauty of working in white pastel. Why work in white pastel? Because I've been doing it since I was like 15 years old. I studied with the best pastel painters in the world. And so it's just a natural medium that works perfectly with the airbrush. No medium works as well with the airbrush as pastel. So it's really great. Mike says, wait till the eyes clear up. That's pretty funny. I'm going to take a water break. Let's see. I am dying of thirst. Okay. We are ready to continue. Well, we're at 1045 right now. And so... So we did the forehead, we had that established, so let's go and work on the cheeks, because that's, you know, going down the center line of the body, remember? And we're going to continue that. But as we're doing this, we're being mindful of her anatomy. So as we're painting the light, guess what happens? The likeness happens. So don't worry about the likeness. I tell my students, the likeness is not your concern until the very end. 
That's not your job. Your job is to paint the light. Oh, Cody says, what tool am I using? I'm using a tortillan or a stump. And you can get them at art stores. And you just uh, apply it with this. I like it because it has a nice point. And you can basically work it like a pencil. So it's really cool. And if you put more pressure on, you get more pastel. You put less pressure, you get less pastel. Really cool. doing is painting the light everybody and you can see how all those different weeks of going over it with the white pastel I'm mean going over it with the light medium and then the, the the detail medium all that is building up to getting the getting the light but before like last week we were working on texture and we established texture then we can come in with the light but if we come with the light before we establish texture then it's just too late you can't put texture over light the light comes afterwards you know hydration is key definitely Patrick I agree uh, my guest says he knows uh, the only do it to make others laugh I love making people smile very cool definitely mr. Mike Always appreciate it. My guess he used to hydrate by a 30 pack. Wow, that's what I call hydration. That's a lot of liquid in your body. Sometimes I have to force myself to drink water, you know? They say when you're thirsty, it's too late. You're already dehydrated. That's what they say. And you see, now I'm moving down the center line about I'm still going to come in later with the, uh, with the detail mixture again to work out some of these values. But you can see now I'm able to really shape her, shape her face. Such a cute face, too. So it looked like her before. But now that we're starting to get the three-dimensional qualities of Jean's face at this moment in time when this photograph was taken. So let me zoom in and show you what I'm doing over there at the Cupid's Bow. See as I bring this up and like this and just like so. You see how that really is. You see that anatomical form is actually not disappearing in the shadow, but continues, but it's uh, working in different values when it hits the shadow area. See that? And then I can come in with the detail mixture and support that. So watch this. So the shadow and the light, they continue there. It's continuous because there is no shadow. It's just diminished light. That's all it is. So if it's light, it still has detail. It's just working with a different set of values. And that's something I go over with my students. And it's something that, you know, you might learn in like a university physics department. But you're not going to learn that in an art class. And that's something that has really been an epiphany for me in the last couple of months.
Oh, coffee's 90% water. Oh, look at that. I did not know about that. That's cool. So, yeah, a lot of information going on around here. That's cool. And you see I'm just moving up here. And so now we can come in with the white again. And what I want to do is I want to really hit this highlight right here. See that on her nose right there? That little... Because that spot on her nose is facing the light most directly. And that's why it's getting that sort of bright light. See how we build that up? And then over here. I like the way that the 1940s uh, photographers, how they worked with that Paramount lighting and the butterfly lighting. It was really nice. What they used was almost a bare reflector on their uh, flash. And that caused this sort of very specular or kind of uh, highlighty kind of uh, highlights, right? And it's very interesting. And just pulling this over like so. So my guess says, uh, do I use skin texture? No. And uh, so this is going back to Steve Hanks. He was a great watercolor painter. And he passed away, but he was one of my heroes. And uh, in one of the articles of American Artist Magazine, and we're talking like 2001, 2000, right? Around that time. And he said some of the questions you always get was, how do you paint skin? How do you paint skin? And most of your painters who were classically trained will, ask, will answer that with the same thing, is that you paint skin by observing. And that's how you paint skin. So if you're observing the light and shadows and you're observing the textures, then skin will happen. You know when I talk about you paint the light and then the re you paint the light and then the uh, likeness will come. The same thing, Mike. If you paint the light, then the skin textures will come. But you know that's how I was trained. Remember, I went to art school for eight years, and I studied in New York City with some of the best artists uh, and teachers ever. And it wasn't like a workshop where you're doing it three, four hours a day for three days and then you pack up and go home. No, it was five days a week, six hours a day, and doing that for eight years. So I learned from them and they learned from their teacher and so on. So there's a lot of uh, tradition in the way that we work. So really... Uh, any kind of skin texture stencil would not be appropriate in the style that I work. Am I against it? No, I think it's great. I think it helps people uh, to, to excel at a fast level. And if that's important to them, you know, I think Drew Blair is an amazing teacher. And he definitely is the torchbearer. Without him, none of this would be happening without Drew Blair, he really brought airbrushing to where it is today. So he's responsible for everything. Do I recommend? Yeah, I recommend trying the skin, tensor the skin texture stencils and stuff like that because I think Drew is an amazing, amazing artist and uh, an amazing teacher. And he's helped so many great artists uh, in the airbrush do amazing work so it's an honor to know drew really is hey what's up there nameless good to see you how are you today and let's see so i'm so glad you're here how's everything going with the work situation is it better
and you see we're doing this little light on the corner of it because on the corner of that mouth of hers it's facing the light a little bit more than everywhere else so that's why you have this little bit of light there so it's like I'm looking for it right if I'm looking for it I'm gonna find it if I'm not looking for it I'm not gonna find it right so those are things you really have to pay attention to see that really cool and um, like I said, we're working down the center line of the body, right? And we're kind of bringing that. So if we zoom out, you can start to see she's really starting to have some volume, right? She really is. And that's, uh, you know, so important. So let's uh, work on her lips. And for her lips, we're going to break out the Fonz and Porter. I heard a beep. That's not a good thing. Whenever I hear a beep... Make sure that my internet is working. Okay. I'm not sure what that beep was. It was like a boop. No, not a good sound. I think that was Alexa. Alexa, play new notification. You don't have any notifications. See that? No notifications. How sad. Okay. So let's come here and work on our lips. And let's do those highlights on her lips here. So we have to pick the position and the angle they're at. Those are two things that are crucial. How far up they, how up on the lips are they, how the distance between the highlight and the crease between the lips and the angle. Very important considerations. There we go. Just like so. And then a little bit of information here. But we want to keep that light. So we're going to use our kneaded eraser and just tone that down. Speaking of tone, where's tone? He's a good artist. I always love talking to him as well as everybody else here. And... Oh, Nayla says nothing at all. Had a huge falling out with his family business. Oh, I see. And staying uh, where you were staying. So now you're taking a couch vacation. Oh, man. So that's rough. So sorry to hear that, sir. And let's see here. Uh, so we did that. And let's take a look and see how that those highlights are looking, my friends. Okay, so you can see life is starting to happen, which is really good. And let's see if we can start putting on some of those highlights in her hair, here and there. Okay, so we're going to look at the big picture. And we're just going with the Fonz and Porter. We're just going to put in a little bit here and there, nothing crazy. I'm going to use very light pressure, less pressure, less white, more pressure, more white. See how we're shaping the light? And we're just looking for direction and the spaces are just important as the this you know where we're putting the light so we want to make sure we make sure we don't uh, you know make the spaces too close because then we're gonna lose what's happening okay Oh, thanks, Mike. Uh, John says those highlights make all the difference. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's all that setting up, you know, and that's what it's all about, just setting that up. And so I just have to make sure that I don't go overboard, that I keep it, I, I keep my wits about me. There's plenty of time, but direction is everything. And you can see, especially in the hair, because these are specular highlights. And why are the hair 
so bright because it's closest to the light right if it's closer to the light it's going to be more bright so that's another one of my timisms you're not painting someone who's sitting in front of you you're painting a moment in time a fraction of a second probably one two thousandth of a second and you're painting that one moment and that fraction in time so you want to know as much about that moment as possible I think those photorealist, photorealist painters out there, they understand what's happening with the photograph. And they're understanding that they're not painting that person uh, as if it was the person was in front of them, but they're painting that split second. And by painting that split second, they're understanding how everything is frozen. And so let's see. Oh, the pen, yes. Uh, thank you so much, Blue. Yes, the Fonz and Porter, which is, uh, it's available at inkflingers.com. It's great, and I, I really think there's nothing like it out there. Nothing like it. It's made out of chalk, so it's basically for one of those, um, it's 0 0.5, I believe. It's made out of chalk. And it also uh, was used or is used for tailors when they measure clothes, when they customize suits and stuff. So that's the reason. And when another artist friend told me about it, it really just revolutionized everything. So you see how that hair, bringing that together, right? And just... We have a long way to go. We're not close to finishing, but at least now it has a feeling of finish, doesn't it? And you see, we understand what the light's doing, right? We understand there is a what is called uh, a, a hair light that's coming from the right side. And that's why this is being illuminated like that. So we're not just blindly copying. We don't want to blindly copy, right? We want to understand what we're doing. We want to be looking for things. See, when I'm looking for that catch light, I can accentuate that a little bit and kind of make it pop even more. So I can actually raise this, uh, this hair light a little bit, maybe one stop to just pop that out. I can do that because I know that if I was a photographer and I raised the f-stop on that flash that's going off on the right, I could get more powerful uh, catch lights. So I might decide to do that, get more powerful catch lights. Like right here on the shoulder, right? You see how right here on the shoulder gets this little bit of light there? And that might be something that other people might miss because they're not looking for it. But I'm looking for it. And you see how that could just make the difference. Oh, thank you, John. John says she's really looking gorgeous. Well, I appreciate that very much, sir. Uh, it's, uh, it's definitely uh, an honor uh, for you to say that. Thank you. And so you see we're just... We're just sculpting her out with light. And that's what we're doing. We're just painting light, which is great. Let's see. So cool. And let's go ahead and continue with her hair a little bit. And we're just, we're not getting specific here. We're just looking for the shapes and we're not really, see how I'm kind of, you know kind of scumbling here because it's not a set shape right it's it's hair hair does weird things right especially so it it's translucent in areas
little bit of a rim light here, right? Because remember, there's light coming from above. The main light is called your key light. So remember that. That's your main light. That's going to be the brightest light when this photograph was taken. You can always tell where the rim light or the key light was, I should say, by the direction of, of the shadows, right? And you can see the shadows are falling a little bit to the right. So the, the, the main light was actually above and just slightly to the left. So that means that there's going to be a little bit of light catching the side of her jawline here. See that? Doesn't look like it's a big thing, but I'm looking for it. And if I'm looking for it, I'm going to find it. If I'm going to find it, I'm going to make it a little more structural, a little more sculptural, right? So that's... It's like next level, right? Next level investigation. So, and you can see right now that, you know, she's coming together, but, um, yeah, so John says she looks like she was shot in the studio with several light sources. Yes, probably three to be exact. So you have the main light source, which is above her, slightly to the left. You have a reflector that's below, and that's reflecting, you know, otherwise the light underneath her chin would be super dark, but there's a reflector that's reflecting light from the key light, or main light, and is reflecting into her shadows, and that's why we see details in the shadows. And then her hair is being lit by a rim light, or there's a lot of different, uh, there's a hair light, rim light, catch light. No, hair light, rim light, kicker light. And so that is off to the right. So even though it's just a reflector, it's still considered a light source. So there is three light sources. Very astute, John, definitely. So yes, three lights, definitely. So very true, sir. And uh, so yeah, and that's something... A good photographer is going to have three lights, but they're pretty much going to follow the main light. So you don't see, you don't see two cast shadows on the nose. You don't see, you know, shadows that are going against the key light. And how you do that is that your fill light and your kicker light have to be at least two stops lower than your main light. In this, I would say probably three stops lower is the uh, is is the uh, kicker light or the hair light from the uh, key light and the reflector light of course it's reflected so that's going to be about three stops lower or three times uh, not three not three times but three stops lower so okay guys what I'm going to do is I'm going to end early because I'm not feeling all that hot. But I just want to say thank you everyone for coming to see me. I hope everyone has a great rest of the week. And uh, so when we come back, we're going to be working on this area over here. So sorry to end early. But like I said, not feeling all that hot. And thank you everybody to, uh, you know, stopping and say, well, thanks, John. I feel just a little stomach ache. And thanks so much, Squeeze and everybody, Steve. And... I hope you all have a great rest of the week. Don't forget, Saturday, thanks, Patrick, and Blue, and everybody, Brad, John, and uh, Colette, and uh, Steve, and thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, Cody, uh, I really appreciate your time. My guess, it's so important. And what I'm going to do is, don't forget, Saturday at 8 o'clock is the Pastel live stream. And that's for an hour. Hope to see you there. And take care.